Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Welcome back to the Movieverse podcast, uh, where we're wrapping up our road to the Oscars 2015, hopefully in time for the Oscars this weekend. And we're doing 12 Years a Boy, or, um, I mean, Boyhood. I'm, yeah, yeah, Boyhood. Yeah, that's what boyhood. I know. Yeah. Um, and apparently, according to the cherry pick quotes on the front of this film, it's a, uh, a moving 12 year epic that isn't quite unlike that isn't quite like anything else in the history of cinema. Um, boyhood, yes. This is, uh, this is the film we're doing today. Hmm. Yeah. Where do you want to start with this? I guess I'll describe it briefly. I guess. <laughs> it's a, it's a coming-of-age drama film, if you will, directed by uh, Richard Linklater, uh, starring, who is all in this, we got Patricia Arquette, uh, L.R. Coltrane is this kid's name. Um, we've, obviously, you've never seen him before because he's like six when he started <laughs> filming this. Uh, this has been his one project for literally the majority of his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, the director's daughter, Lor- Laura Lee Linklater, um, is also in it. Ethan Hawke. And then there's a uh, supporting cast of uh, Marco Perlana is the, uh, the second husband. And Brad Hawke. Yeah, Brad Hawkins is the third husband, and um, all a bunch of dickheads, basically. Professor and correction officer, in that order. Yeah, so the premise of this story Both is, is, is uh, it films 12 years of this boy's life, and it actually films 12 years of this boy's life. Um, that They started 12 years ago when this kid was real fucking young, and uh, he was 19 when they finished, so it's a bit of a... A gimmicky kind of thing they tried out. It was um, how do you make how do you do proper aging in a film? Well, you you just wait the appropriate time, I suppose. <laughs> um, Which yeah. had to me to me, I thought that was a, a little hit and miss in certain areas. I thought at certain times it kind of just seemed like out of nowhere. It's just there's like holy shit, now they're three years older. Or, you know, along, mm. some, along those lines. Which I guess you know, as far as whatever from like you know parents i guess i don't know why i did air quotes I don't know. they're actually parents <laughs> parents <laughs> so-called parental but yeah no but i mean i guess you know how they always say that you know you turn around and your kid's growing up or whatever or i guess unless it's supposed to imply that but at the same Maybe. time this film drags on for so damn long that it sure doesn't feel like that's the truth mm-hmm. it's almost three hours long and it's almost just like they ran out of things to do when they were at certain ages, so those are shorter periods. Mm-hmm. That's the thing I don't understand. To me, I was, I don't know, I'd, like we were talking about earlier, if you, as you said, if you uh, gave this script to any other filmmaker, and they shot it in uh, a movie that was shot in about a year, a few years, mm-hmm. it, like it a would be terrible. Film. Yeah, it would be terrible. Yeah, there'd be nothing special about it. And unfortunately, there isn't much special about this film. Except my, for the way it was shot. In yeah. my opinion, except for the way it was shot. To actually, you know, <coughs> film a boy, or a boy as he becomes a man, um, and form somewhat of a story around it. It's not a particularly good or interesting one, but no. uh, it, there is, like, a, a story that holds it all together. Um, it's it's kind of an achievement in filmmaking. It's never really been tried in the drama kind of form before, but unfortunately, it comes off, um, you know, as <laughs> sadly the only thing that sticks out about this film, because um, it's it's decently acted, but it's just like it's um, I don't know. There's nothing exciting that really happens. Like, no, it's it's honestly just almost like watching someone you knew grow up or mm. you know someone that uh you have an idea of grow up it's literally just a kid growing up that's the whole point of the story or if you're and an the a, fact that if you're you know, an adult <laughs> yeah or in the fact that his mother makes absolutely horrible decisions when it comes to men except for his father who somehow turns out better than any of the men she marries afterwards mm-hmm. who knew? so i don't know i just <laughs> i wasn't that impressed with the yeah. story and i think that's where it kind of fails for me yeah, the so way the way it's shot is awesome. I mean, that's cool. Like you said, it's definitely an achievement as far as filmmaking goes. But that's to me is when we're talking about nominees for best picture. That's just that's not enough, especially when you're stacked no. up against something like Grand Budapest Hotel. I agree. Um, yeah, the storyline is rather just you know 
plain because it is the story of a just a boy growing up. And guess what? I used to be a boy too. I lived most of this shit right here. This guy over here also used to be a boy. We lived this shit. And unfortunately, I had I got I became a man early. This this came in when I was like twelve. Mm-hmm. Yes, he uh, he matured quickly. It was the beard. He's blessed in the beard. I think uh, that's when I started going bald up top too. Mm-hmm. Hey, the beard makes up for it. Don't worry about it. Didn't turn into a. You didn't have an emo phase, did you? There we go. That's what we'll do. We'll film the next ten years of my life. We'll call it manhood. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll, I'll I'll get a I'll get a fucking Oscar for it. Yeah. We just twelve years a guy. <laughs> twelve years a guy. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'll just be like eating cheeseburgers and going to work and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's what I. Oh. <laughs> that's literally how. And I that's the kind of that. stuff that happens awesome. in this cool. film. I mean, it, there is you know dramatic dark turns in that. You know the struggles of growing up. You know when you're uh, you got a somewhat estranged dad. Your mom's a fucking moron and marries <laughs> marries three alcoholics in a row. That's a problem. That's always a bummer. Uh, and you know, not to mention you're a twiggy little weird kid that that you know I can relate to that. So I it <laughs> it it explores all that shit, which you know, again, is not all that interesting. Uh, you may you probably have had more interesting events happen in your life, and if someone filmed them, hey, could have had an Oscar nomination. Yeah, if you recently hit your head and have amnesia and don't remember the the entire uh, span of your life, this is a good movie to watch. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I mean, honestly, that's still in the blanks. You know, <laughs> I'm selling it short a little bit, but yeah, we are a little bit because the way that it's filmed is is very impressive the fact mm-hmm. that they actually had the dedication and determination to be able to pull that off over a span of 12 years including and i mean like obviously with a little kind of lesser known actors it's a little bit easier just because they probably weren't you know, as busy as someone like ethan hawk or i mean patricia arquette had the show the medium for a couple of years so mm-hmm. i would have i would assume that in that time she was doing this as well but um yeah ethan hawk's gotten much bigger than <laughs> yeah I mean, he did Day Breakers and yeah, yeah. a couple Tra- of movies. Training Day was time. obviously huge. But oh, I might, Perch. I might have been before this started. I can't remember. Maybe yeah. not, actually. I don't, I don't know. know because of how long it's taken them. But mm-hmm. that's that's what's impressive about it. And unfortunately, that's, like you said, probably the only thing that's really stand out as far as yeah, uh, it's something a, impressive goes. It's a, it's a huge gamble, for sure. Like, what if something yeah. something fell through during the production of this? Like, Well, that's why I have great admiration for yeah. Berger Linklater. It's kind of like the uh, same with what he did with the Scanner Darkly, right? It was uh, something that nobody else had seen before. But to me, that see a story like that, that was way more interesting. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's a di- different because it is based off novel by uh, Philip K. Dick, but yeah, I love how Richard Linklater just does different shit all the time. Like you can look. I do like that. And you, I you look at all. Him, yeah, you look at all of his films over the years, and I don't like a lot of them to be honest. But you, they're all different, which is I got to give him respect for that. He keeps yeah. tr- he keeps trying new things when well, they don't always work. But you know, he'll go <laughs> from der- you know uh, documentary to comedy to something like this. And he tr- he tries different shit. I respect that. But this and I is mean, one of the misses, though. <laughs> but even in, even in the technical uh, aspects of the film, too. Aside from the way that they do the aging by just you know filming it over twelve years of the actors' lives. Um, aside from that, there's really nothing spectacular, even on a technical side of it. No, it's not. Uh, it's very kind of basic, in my opinion. As yeah, far the as cine- cinematography is basic. Yeah. Um, the camera work, the, the all group. the editing and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Is, uh, it's pretty very run-of-the-mill. standard. Mm. Whereas the, again, you're going up against stuff like Grand Budapest Hotel, or even Imitation Game, or and this is going to sound bad considering you know what we said about Selma, but as far as technical aspect goes, even Selma. Selma is a better, better film than this movie. I, I thought so agree. too, mm-hmm. and that's it's weird too because I mean, honestly, it's. It is great to see someone attempt something like this, but I really wish he had chosen something with a little more substance to it. And I don't mean substance as in depth, because this film is about as deep as the fucking ocean when it comes to storyline. But it's the most boring storyline if you've, you know, been alive for more than... (laughs) <laughs> More than ten years. Like, I mean, uh, I just don't understand. Yeah, I mean, like, there's um, 
people like escapism in their film, and this is kind of the opposite of that. This is reminderism. <laughs> yeah, this is... So, the, hey, remember when you were growing up? Do you remember... Hey, did you get bullied? Do you remember that? In the, yeah, it's like, <laughs> did you get bullied? Check. Do you remember video games? Check. <laughs> was, your step dad an, was your stepdad an asshole? Check. <laughs> like, uh, it goes through all of them. And, you know, I, I've i lived a lot of this shit, too, which makes it just not all that interesting. No. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I prefer a just if they were going to do this kind of film to, to uh, focus on one part of his life maybe and then abandon the whole the uh, the whole overtime gimmick but then again that's what makes this stand out so well if it had been similar to say a basketball diaries situation where he becomes you know this massive drug addict after showing such promise and you know and they stretch that out okay sure I'll watch that but you're all you're showing me is just a, a standard, typical... It's Well, I mean, aside from the whole stepdads and his mother's situation. Uh, aside from that, a, a pretty much a, a typical uh, um, upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. Most people have maybe one shitty stepdad. This guy had three. And that is a bummer. Yeah, um, that's a little... Yeah, I mean... I gotta wonder how much better off would this kid's life be. And his sister, and his mom... If she wasn't stupid and didn't <laughs> get with Make these terrible life choices, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can talk. I about felt bad it. for the for the professor, the first husband, or sorry, the second husband after Ted. Um, I felt bad for his kids because they're they're stuck on that asshole. Mm-hmm. She says she called child services, but I for some reason I don't believe her. I think she was just saying that she shut Samantha up. Yeah, I kind of agree, and they never follow up on whatever happened. <laughs> like that's that's kind of thrown away. Um, but, but as far as performances go, I mean, besides uh, like with Coltrane, for instance, I'm just gonna call him Coltrane because it sounds cooler. And but, uh, Coltrane. But uh, what what did you think overall of his performance? I mean, given the fact that obviously he did do this starting as I, what? How old was he? Do you know? Was it six? Um. Yeah. I think um, it, was, it has. I feel like it would be a little older than that. Uh, apparently they started production t- of this film in 2002, so... And they finished when he was 19? Mm-hmm. Which I'm assuming means they finished last year? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I guess, yeah, it would have been six or seven when they started this. <laughs> if my math is, if my math is correct. Which my is, math is never correct, so that's why I didn't even guesstimate. Mm-hmm, neither is notice, I. Notice I didn't say estimate, because an estimation is a get, uh, educated guess. I, yeah. I, I don't have an educated guess, just a I, guess. I, I always guesstimate. That's what I do. Um, yeah, it was... <laughs> honestly, I think it was not bad, honestly. When he was a kid, not bad. Like uh, for, for As far as child actors are, especially nowadays... Yeah, uh, that's kind of what yeah. I'm, that's kind of what I mean. Most ch- child actors or young actors are kind of terrible, and that's because well, they're children, uh, <laughs> and th- he's not bad. I mean, he's he gets l- he gets less and less believable or less and less good <laughs> if you want to go that route as he gets older. I think by the time he hits hits his emo phase, he's a little bit uh, just an angsty little punk and <laughs> doesn't. Isn't the most fleshed out character, I feel, by that point. Which should really be the opposite, because they've been building 12 years to this moment, right? Yeah, Mason, quit spending all your time in the dark room. Mm -hmm. So I think overall, okay. I mean, is it really fair to judge this this guy on, uh, you know, 12 12 different years of acting of his life? I guess that's what he signed up for. (laughs) And that's the odd part, right? I mean, with Mm -hmm. most actors... With most actors, you would that would be a gigantic body of work. I mean, with Nicolas Cage, that's about two thousand four hundred and sixty-seven films. Mm-hmm. So, um, not including for, television and uh, directed DVD. Uh, oh no, I was including that, <laughs> and the ones he probably makes in his backyard. But uh, no, this kid he does do a good job. I mean, especially mm-hmm. considering it's not. A, he yeah. must have known when he was uh, uh, that young that he pretty much just signed up to. I hope, he, every I hope so he often. Knew. I hope yeah, he wasn't. So often, I hope he just years, wasn't. Right? I hope it, Richard Linklater just didn't bug the shit out of him to keep coming back for, you know, hey, whenever. What are you doing? Whenever he said, I feel like whenever this kid quit, he was like, "No, what? I don't want to be in your stupid movie anymore. I'm <laughs> getting too old for this." That's when he's like, "Okay, we'll end. We'll wrap the movie up there. That'll, uh, be, that'll be when the credits roll." 
So I was willing to go until he was 25. Just saying. Yeah. It's like a dra- dramatized documentary of a, of a guy's life. It is. That's a, that's a very good way of putting it. Mm-hmm. It's just... Yeah. Yeah, they just just well acted and shit. You know what? I would honestly rather watch a documentary that is twelve years of somebody's life. Mm-hmm. I would hope it's somebody more. Real life is more interesting kid. than a fictional. Yes, story yes, and that's the problem about real life. That's it's not even like there's really anything extravagant about it, except for again the fact that you know his mm-hmm. mom makes terrible, terrible life choices, oh, and that's just on her. It, again, as far as performances go. Patricia Arquette, I did. I really could have done without. I didn't think there was anything special there. I no, didn't, I sure. didn't like her uh, until uh, some of the scenes when I haven't liked her since True Romance. I agree with that, but she was better in some of the later scenes. I think she, was, she was okay, but I didn't like her at the beginning when she was just like said nothing at the table when her her uh, husband and their kid stepdad just went ballistic. She just sat there, and I don't know why. <laughs> she does. She does a lot of that. Um, I liked Ethan Hawk. So- Ethan Hawke's performance in this a lot. I thought he was on point. Yeah. See, and I thought he was better when he was younger than he was when he was older. So it's almost like the reverse. Hmm. Yeah. It, this is so weird about this film that we have to make. We have to point that out with each different performance. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, you know, because there's there is a huge difference, and you know. Ethan now, one person, one person though, aside from sorry, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but Ethan, oh, we, we can revisit him if you'd like. But the uh, Lorelai, uh, I believe that's her name, Lorelai Linklater. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, uh, director's yeah. daughter, who plays the main character's sister. I thought she actually did a really good job throughout. She had pr- she was probably the most believable character of the whole movie, as far as thinking of her as just a. Like you're as if you are watching a documentary. Mm, just I kind of think she's the co-star of this film, to be honest, because mm. it's um she's in a lot of this film and she does a good job throughout. I think. I mean, she is a weird, peppy looking kid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's hilarious when she's a kid. Yeah, yeah, she is really funny, and she carries a lot of the uh, the humor of the film because there's very little to speak of in it. <laughs> but I liked her performance a lot. Yeah, and obviously. I haven't seen too much of her because, again, they started when she was real young and she's the director's daughter. Uh, yeah, she hasn't been in much except for, yeah, one other of, it, of uh, her dad's films, Waking Life, if you've ever seen that. Yep. Yep, she's in that, apparently. It's very similar to the style of uh, A Scanner Darkly. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah, this guy does strange films, <laughs> and this one is just anti-strange <laughs> and that's the thing I, I was going to this thinking like oh sweet you know the newest one from Richard Linklater right I was thinking this is going to be awesome and unfortunately I, I'm still saying you know a scanner darkly is above and beyond what this film does for me mm-hmm. I do agree that it's obviously a far cry more difficult in for, in uh, terms of filmmaking to do something like this than a scanner darkly obviously I understand that because he must just, have been doing this while doing all those films, right? That's kind of crazy. But you said they started in 2003? Or 2000, 2001. They started pre-production. Yeah, they started filming in 2002, I guess. Then yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they would have been. Hmm, that's crazy. But, um... Sorry to cut you off. Continue. Well, no, that's fine. Yeah, but so it's just... I just found that to be the part that just kind of holds me back from really thinking all that much of it even in terms of filmmaking just because it, you can't just because something's different i don't think that makes it good you know what i mean and i, agree. I and i understand that there's difficulty to it but at the same time you still have to give a story that's you know at least somewhat like it, it involves people like gets you pulls you in a bit like at least makes you think or something if you're going to just talk about life Mm-hmm. Raise questions. Make it be some, you know, yeah, philosophical yeah. conversations like he did in uh, Waking Life, speaking of. That's what I don't understand. Like, if you took aspects of that as far as s- storytelling goes and put it in here, it would have been a lot better to me. I, I didn't really think I it kind of... Yeah, I really didn't think it kind of made you think that much. It was just watch this kid grow up and look what he kind of goes through. That's Yeah, it's a, co- it's a coming of age story, right? And there's no, I don't feel there's any real clear message or overall 
ending message about how to overcome these difficult things in life or maybe any insight or alternate take on it it just presents it and uh that's kind of a problem because if you're gonna you know the greatest coming of age films what you may remember <coughs> is how that you know specific event that whatever character was going through relates to something in your life and while you will relate a lot to shit in this in this movie it's uh it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't offer any alternate take on it right it just presents it and you're like okay well i c- I, I remember that and i don't i remember that <laughs> And I think one of the problems, too, might just be the fact that he did try to involve too many characters. I mean, it is a little unnecessary, and I feel that's probably one of the biggest parts that seems unrealistic, in my opinion, that the mother, as far as, you know, her decision-making goes and the things that she does after marrying her, you know, college professor that beats the crap out of her, she leaves him, somehow becomes a college professor when she was pretty much barely graduating a community college, from my understanding. I assumed that's how they made it seem that's why she was banging him in the first place. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's what it seemed to imply. But, uh, so she goes from that to being a college professor and then marrying one of her students, or at least banging one of her students and inviting him to live there while he's a corrections officer. It just makes no sense to me. She it's just poor decision making. Yeah, it, it was just kind of like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so Someone like this, I feel like, would have her kids taken away. I feel like after this first yeah. after this first time, they'd be like, okay, you know, like, so obviously this guy was a bad guy. Second time, they'd be like, okay, so this guy's a bad guy, but what were you thinking bringing the kids into this house? Third guy, I'd be like, I, I feel like, they'd be like, okay, you know what, we got to take them out of your care as well. CAS would have been all over that. Yeah, like, you you fucked up. I know I'm obviously reading into it too much, but still. Maybe, it's, but it's quite clear that... I, have, I had nothing else to do in this movie. I wasn't <laughs> intrigued at all. all. I mean, <laughs> fucking just kind of sitting there, just kind of overanalyzing. Like, yeah, you know what? Like, I mean, if in this situation, this wouldn't actually happen. What would happen? Yeah, is, yeah. Is, and uh, obviously, that's not a good thing to no, do when not. you're watching a film. And I kind of think this film may have been edited and written on the go. It, between the years, I think things changed. And maybe that's why there's three different stepdads, because they couldn't get the first dad to, to sign on for... Yeah, that could be, because they do kind of come out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, and yeah, this it hops around way too much, I think. Um, and it doesn't really hop back and forth all that much, The there's a few times where it's questionable, like they might have filmed something later on or earlier to f- fill something in. You know what would have been a good movie that would have been done this style? What? Some sort of prison-themed movie, whether it's a guy or a female, male or female. There you go. I was trying prison, to... you want to span something over 12 years? How about doing Old Boy and doing it like this? That would have been impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. That would have been sweet. And that's where I think this concept would have really shined. The con- <laughs> the concept is brilliant. Like, I mean, Richard Linklater literally just exposed a new type of filmmaking. It's almost hyper-realism. But at the same time, the way, like, that's what where the story just completely detracts from how damn impressive it is. Because, I mean, realistically, no one's ever done that. Yep. It's 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 the new it's like that's what it is. It's hyper realism. It's the most realistic way to tell a long story, right? You oh, gotta yeah, have absolutely. people. Absolutely. They're supposed to be older. They're older. Yeah. It's and you think about it, it's fucking almost easier than doing the prosthetics and the makeup and fu- and really no one really sees through that. Like everyone does see through that shit when you they do do a, like decade aging in films. Um, but this one it worked obviously just because you know make him we need uh, we need this boy to be 18 okay let's just wait till he's 18 <laughs> and we'll film uh, along the way um, yeah I don't know uh, this is an okay concept decently acted but just come doesn't like leave a lasting impression on me whatsoever no unfortunately no and when we're talking about the best of the best this year feel like this is uh well it might deserve to be uh you know acknowledged for the the way it was filmed it definitely does it does deserve to at least be acknowledged for it. yeah and uh well it did get acknowledged i guess if it got nominated but i don't see it taking home the the win um, if it does i feel it's it's not right mm-hmm. you know? 
it'll be unjust. Yeah. Or un- unjust, sorry. I feel a lot of people like escapism when they go to the films, and this is the opposite of that. It's hyper realism. And that's gonna. I feel that's gonna bug people. Bug me a little bit. Because yeah. I like to, uh, I like to escape in my films and see scenarios and stories uh, that I've never seen before, or at least told a way I've never seen before. And this is a story I've lived, <laughs> told a way I've seen before. And I don't know, I just can't help but shrug a little bit at that. Yeah, there's many different concepts that I mean you could do with this, where it would mm-hmm. be gorgeous. The prism you, idea is gold. The gold. Prism, oh, the Omega Man. The Omega Man, uh, yeah, some sort of apocalypse. Span that, yeah, span that over some years. Like you said, <laughs> old boy. Old boy. Or, uh, yeah. Some sort of space or astronaut kind of thing. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're up there for a number of years. It, it, the possibilities are endless, and I feel like Richard Linklater definitely did deserve that, uh, um, uh, what are you, sorry, <laughs> that uh, uh, kind of notice, right? Like he deserved that attention because he did just open that door. Nobody else has done that. That's impressive. That's I hope somebody thing. else out there is currently doing it and working on another project similar to this. Uh, sorry, I stumbled over my words. I couldn't think of what I wanted to say. No, yeah, it's all good. That's that's what I do all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 cool in its concept, but I just really don't see this being memorable and to me in the future. <laughs> like uh, I don't know. No, it's it's kind of like a uh, definitely like, not. Like a TV movie, almost. <laughs> but uh, with a really cool gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's too bad. I like, uh, I like me some Richard Linklater. It, exactly. And like we were saying, I mean, with the performances, some of them are okay and some of them are decent. Yeah. Some of them are... A couple are good, but that's about it. And uh, I don't know. I mean, even on, as we were saying before, on the technical side of the film... Aside from how it's shot, there really isn't that much impressive. I mean, even the soundtrack kind of feels like it's just sort of slapped together. Yeah, barely noticed it. I mean, they tried to throw in little elements of the time. The time, exactly. Yeah, and that was smart to do. But uh, I really didn't feel it. Like It didn't feel like, uh, I don't know, the production itself was kind of slapped together around this idea. It's like, okay, let's just, a commitment to film every year kind of thing yeah exactly Mm -hmm. it's cool though but uh i don't know not exactly my cup of tea and i don't think it's uh worthy of best picture or my top three to be my personal top three yeah i actually don't even know if it's in the top five uh, as far as my personal top five to be honest no it's probably not (laughs) for me speaking of which should we go ahead and just give it a rating right now yeah, I suppose we could. There's not too much else I want to talk about it. I mean, it's an interesting idea if you're if you're excited about uh, filmmaking. Excuse me. You may find something um, something of interest in the way it was made, and you know uh, we're fans of filmmaking, so that's obviously going to appeal to us a little bit. But it's you know it pales in comparison to the artistry of things like Grand Budapest and. Yeah well orchestrated movie magic that uh takes you know the skill and effort of hundreds of people to carefully craft I feel like this was a uh this has more of a low budget feel obviously it had almost no budget but it, it feels low budget and that's going to get to people um as for a score i'd have to go probably six i'd go with a six out of ten that was decently unimpressed with this movie uh i'm sorry it had cool concepts and uh decent acting but i'm i mean i'm happy i watched it but uh not i don't think it's in the the running for top five this year well you know what it's unfortunate like i was saying because i did hope that it would have been something a little more impressive Mm -hmm. but unfortunately because of how kind of tame and just mundane the story is it almost detracts as much from the quality of the film as the fake baby did from American Sniper. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, in my opinion, even more so, because American Sniper is a far more entertaining film. I thought a lot of performances in it were actually better than in this. Yep. Again, only the style of, or sorry, not even the style, the approach to the direction of the film in the time that they took to actually span across a kid's life 
that's the only part that's impressive. And just for that, I'm going to give it a seven. Mm-hmm. But that is, I mean, as far as if, if it was shot in a two-hour film, this would be a five for me. Yeah, that's so. what I was feeling. Like, I feel if this was shot over a couple months like a normal film or, you know, didn't have that uh, that gimmick or didn't have at least, you know, Ethan Hawke's decent performance and a few other decent performances, it would be like a three because it's yeah. like, oh, it's, exactly. it's, it's just like a lifetime network film or something. Like, it's not all that interesting to me. Um, but because of the cool concept and the, uh, the the ambition to take chances on shit like this because it's very cool that people do this or that at least Richard is, is trying this stuff uh, it deserves it deserves a definite pass but it's just not that entertaining plain and no. simple mm-hmm. yes. well anything else you'd like to say sir? No, I think that about says it all all right. Well, thank you all for watching our uh, our review of Boyhood or Twelve Years a Dude. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. My name has been the Habitual Pixels, my co-host Big Nasty Productions, um, and thank you for tuning into the Road to the Oscars. We got three movies left. Two movies left. Yes, two yeah. movie, two movies in everything and imitation game. Yes, theory of everything and imitation game. Which both are of which are decent at the very least so stay tuned for that and uh, we'll see you next time